Hi, congratulations on your Thermomix TM6. Guess what? Today is your unboxing day. And thank you for having me in your wonderful home so that we can do the unboxing together. So prior to your Thermomix box arriving, I hope you have set up your cookie do account so that you can explore thousands of recipes and save the ones that you want to make for your family. Type the URL cookiedo.international directly in the browser. Make sure you are at the right web page. Click on sign up. Enter a valid email address. Create a password. Choose your country of residence. Tick the column and sign up. Next, Access your email account and look for an email from Thermomix customer service. Activate your account by clicking on the button. And I hope you have seen the unboxing video that I've sent across to you so that you will be a little bit familiar with what we're going to be doing today. Alright, so our box is here. Let's set up. Okay, so let's cut it open. There you go. And let's check the content of the box first and foremost. So when we open it, you are going to be greeted by two booklets. Alright, and we're going to have the Welcome Guide as well as the 7 Day Perfection. Okay, and the Welcome Guide is going to be the one we're going to be using today to guide our unboxing activity. Let's look at what else we have. Definitely, we have your accessory box so inside here are all the accessories that come together with your thermal mix package what we're gonna do is we're gonna check each of each and every single item that is inside while it's in in its original packaging like the varuma lid there's a spatula inside a splash guard the butterfly whisk the varoma dish as well as the varoma tray which is not inside a plastic and last but not the least is the measuring cup so check everything while it is inside its original packaging in case if there are any dents or damages then you can exchange it while it's in original packaging okay let's put that inside what we're gonna have next is also our basic cookbook all right so this basic cookbook would be inside a plastic packaging and it is an amazing resource for you and your family to read through because it not only consists recipes but also a lot of articles that you can refer to like for example making caramels for you and your family even ice cream bread and pastry but what i want you to focus on later on is go to the end of the book there is a lot of pages on resources with regards to chopping functions as well as steaming so if you have any questions or you are wondering how fast do i chop my onions and what is the quantity or how long do i need to steam my fish or chicken for that is the part of the cookbook that you can go to so that is your basic cookbook let's look what else we have inside Ta -da! this is going to be the grand unboxing of your tm6 because uh, I'm going to be taking out the Thermomix TM6. Just hold the handle, yeah, hold it very firmly, and you can place the Thermomix on your surface. And not to forget, there is also an instruction manual that you can refer to in the language that you desire. There's English, Mandarin, and a lot of others. So this is your TM6 in its plastic packaging. The only accessory that is not inside the box is in fact the simmering basket which is inside the TM6 bowl once you open up the plastic itself. Once you open up the plastic bags, I want you to make sure that everything is intact, there's no clear damages that you can look out for and you want to take out the stickers, the protective stickers that are on the locking arm. There are two. They are blue in colour, so you want to peel these off as well as another protective sticker that is on the LCD. So make sure you do that. And now we are ready to the second part of our unboxing whereby I'm going to be talking to you about your setup. 
Let's do that. So we've already checked the content of our Thermomix DM6 box and we've put the machine right on our solid surface. You can wash all your accessories in advance before you use it for the first time. So now we're going to open our welcome guide because this is what's going to guide you for our unboxing today. Let's flip through the pages. The first page it says for you to set up your cookie dough and the second page was to check all your um, items inside the box. So we can move along and go to page number four where we're going to start your Thermomix journey. And the first thing to find is the perfect spot for your Thermomix. So look around in your kitchen to find a clean, solid surface that is stable, such as this one. And that is where you're going to place your Thermomix. What you also want to consider is the work area of your thermal mix. So number one, if you do put it underneath a cabinet, make sure there is enough um, height to put your Varoma on top and for steam to come out. Okay. Another thing is that you want to hold the handle and lift your thermal mix around, never drag it and I'll tell you why in a bit. And you also want to consider where you're going to plug it. So find it a, a place where it's near a, a plug. Um, it can be on the table just like mine or directly to a wall socket. So you want to also extend the wire, all right? You want to extend the wire up all the way to the red marker over here. This is about one meter in length. And why do we want to do this is that if you do need to move your thermal mix around, you're not going to snag the wire and unplug the plug itself. Or if you do have a place that is already, you know, that's where it's going to be for a very long time, you can tuck it in as well. All right. So that's what you want to do. Another thing to consider in the work area is the area in front of the thermal mix as well as around. Because when you start to cook, you might want to put your ingredients on the side or when you want to flip over the lid, you have space to put them as well. And when you are doing kneading, especially when you are doing kneading, the thermal mix is, might move a little bit and you want to have enough space in front so that the thermal mix is still going to be on your countertop and safe at the spot that you put it in and will be stable there. All right. So that's another thing for you to consider. Okay. So we spoke about the work area, the surface. The other thing is to make sure that it is near a Wi-Fi um, connection so that it is in Wi-Fi range so that you can get the connection as well as the strength of the Wi-Fi itself. So Wi-Fi is important for you to do your software updates as well as get connected to Cookidoo, the guided cooking function in the Thermomix to help you cook for your family. Isn't that wonderful? So when we set up our Thermomix, just turn it on and it is very simple. All you got to do with your fingertip, turn it on and all you got to do is just press the selector dial, which is also your power button. In fact, there is a small little picture at the bottom of the selector dial that indicates this is the power button, meaning that this is the switch on as well as off. And whenever you use the Thermomix, this is also the button to stop the machine when it is operating. So when it is switched on, all you got to do is just again, for the initial startup, let it run for about five minutes, you know, just wait for the startup to finish. And when it is done, you're going to be welcome with a screen to ask to set up your TM6. And the first item is about setting up your language. So choose the appropriate language for you. And then choose the country, Malaysia, Brunei or Singapore. The next screen is going to be asking you to connect to Wi-Fi. Okay. And then the next one will be asking you to connect to your Cookidoo account. So you have already set up your Cookidoo account with the email and password. Do remember that. If you don't, don't worry. You can even write it up in the welcome guide cover page. In fact, write down your cookie do email password even my name as your advisor and contact just in case anybody else who uses the thermomix needs some help okay so once you do that with your cookie do the next thing that your welcome guide says is that let's go through all the safety messages so you can read the safety instructions which i will walk you through at the end of the unboxing later today another thing that is recommended before you 
use your Thermomix for the first time is also to do any software updates. So it will prompt on your screen with, um, if there are any software update that needs to be done. So it is recommended that you complete all the download and installation. Make sure that you do not turn off your TM6 or uh, switch off at the main plug during the download and software installation process itself. Okay, so we are done with the setup and startup of your TM6. The next round is we're gonna get to know all your Thermomix parts. Let's get started. Let's go through all the parts and accessories of your Thermomix and we're gonna start with the base unit itself. As you can see, the base unit is white and pristine with the cover plate intact. All right. So what you want to do with the base unit itself is again always lift it up and never drag it and the reason is because we have the weighing scale sensors at the bottom so if you do drag it then it might affect the weighing scale um, accuracy itself. So just place it and make sure you remember that vital rule of never dragging it. Okay, so now we have the beautiful white cover plate and to take care of your cover plate it's very simple. All you got to do is know how to lift and put your mixing bowl back onto the base unit. So all you got to do when you want to lift your mixing bowl, hold the top handle and lift it upwards. All right. And then when you want to place it back down, also place it from the top into your base unit. All right. So let's do that again. Lift it upwards. And why do you do that? Because if you were to place it from the front, you might hit your locking arms, right? And when you do this, it might cause cracks on your cover plate and that is what we want to avoid. Hence, you want to hold the handle and place it from the top. If it is heavy, you can hold it with two hands or with the other hand on top at the mixing bowl mouth over here. So just like that, okay? And if you were cooking and then there are spills coming over through your cover plate, don't worry, just take a cloth and you can just dab it around just like that to wipe away any spills. Just be careful when you want to wipe on the LCD screen itself because it can be sensitive and it might affect the timing or the temperature of your cooking. So just make sure you dab it carefully. All right, so that's what you can do with your cover plate to take care of it. Okay, the next thing we want to take a look at is our mixing bowl itself. Alright, so we know how to pick it up just like that and we know how to put it back down. So let's take a look at our mixing bowl. Okay, so as you can see, this is the handle to pick it up and there is a trick. If you want to pour it out, what I want you to do is get used to hold the bottom part of the handle. And this is more ergonomic for you to pour out any kind of food that you have inside the mixing bowl. Okay? So what you also want to check out is that your mixing bowl is made out of stainless steel. Alright? So it means that it's not going to smell and it's very, very easy to clean. It is 2.2 liter capacity and you can see the markings right inside the bowl itself. All right, there you go. So take a look at your bowl and what you also want to check is at the bottom of the bowl, you will see the five pins. All right, so what you want to make sure is that whenever you want to place the mixing bowl onto the base unit, that the five pins are dry. Okay, you got that? So this is your mixing bowl. And what we're going to do next is learn how to disassemble your mixing bowl. There are two ways to do that and I'm going to teach you the first method. Okay, so the first method is just hold on to the handle and then with the other hand, what you want to do is go inside the indentation of the base. All right, put your four fingers right inside and you should be able to hold your base quite stable like that. And hold the handle with the other hand and what you want to do is twist it clockwise right now this will dislodge the base and you are now free to take out the mixing knife okay so that is step number one you will have three pieces of item the base the mixing knife and also the bowl that is how to disassemble it now the first way to reassemble your bowl is 
to put the mixing knife back inside the bowl and there is only one way to put it it is quite foolproof so you just park it inside it should fit inside the holes that are made ready for your mixing knife and what you want to do is you want to take your base again just like how you disassembled it and remember just now you twist it clockwise meaning that when you want to put it back onto the bowl it is at an angle okay so the tongue of the base would be at an angle and now what you want to do is reverse the earlier action now you twist it counterclockwise so that the base would meet the handle just like that all right so you would know when your bowl is secure when you flip it over the mixing knife doesn't fall off all right so that is step number one make sure that you know how to disassemble and reassemble your bowl because you would need to care and maintain for your bowl to keep it clean and make sure that it lasts for a very very long time okay so that's number one now let's look at the second way to disassemble your bowl firstly i want you to grab a towel or a thermal mat just like this something to cover and what you want to do is take your mixing bowl and i want you to flip it over just like that okay just like that and remember just with your four fingers again and the other hand holding the handle put in your hand inside the base and now you are going to twist it counterclockwise with your hand okay in my case i'm using my right hand so what it's going to do is it's going to dislodge the mixing knife which is going to fall directly onto the table all right so this is another way to disassemble your bowl and when do you use this method when you are making bread when you have your dough right inside this is the easiest way to get your dough out okay you can just slowly push the mixing knife through the bottom of the hole and then your dough will come out even easier you don't have to use your hand and you know pluck it out just like that okay so this is the first the second way in fact to disassemble your bowl now we are going to talk about the mixing knife okay when we talk about the mixing knife let's look at its structure it has four blades one two three and four and they are set up at different heights okay and there is one blunt side of each blade and another one that is sharp okay the design of the knife is what enables the thermomix to cut so evenly even at low or high speed that is superbly amazing okay so what i want you to take note about your mixing knife is there is a green sealing ring at the bottom of the knife okay now what i want you to know and do and practice is you can take off this green sealing ring and clean it as well as clean the underneath part of the mixing knife here okay um, sometimes when you cook there are going to be food that is stuck underneath the mixing knife and this is how you open the sealing ring and clean it now every single time after you wash i want you to directly put the sealing ring back in so you do not forget the sealing ring is very important before you reassemble your bowl to make sure that there is no food that is going to leak onto your base unit when you use your thermomix all right so this is your mixing knife make sure that you also handle it confidently i don't want it to be you know to fall on your feet or something like that so this is your mixing knife whenever you want to clean it make sure that you also clean in between the knife creases over here to make sure that there is no food stuck in between all right so now i'm going to teach you the second way to reassemble your bowl so what you want to do is put the base unit stably on the work counter and next is you put on the mixing bowl onto the base and take your mixing knife oh but before that what you want to notice is that I've put the mixing bowl and the base at an angle that doesn't meet with the handle just yet. All right? So put it at an angle, just like that. 
And now you are ready to put in your mixing knife. Okay, so just put in your mixing knife. And now you want to get the two of the handles for the base and the bowl to meet together. Just like that. And it is back secure. Alright, so this is how you disassemble and also assemble your mixing bowl. Alright, so what are we going to do next? We are going to place this back onto the Thermomix, into the base unit. I'm going to bring this closer to me and I want to introduce you to the mixing bowl lid. Okay, the mixing bowl lid is already attached to a silicone ring at the bottom. Okay, this is what's going to help secure all the food inside the bowl and not splash about. Okay, what we want to do when we want to put the lid on is just gently put it onto the mixing bowl. You do not need to press it down, just gently place it onto the mixing bowl just like that. Okay, the next thing I want to introduce you to is our measuring cup. So this is our measuring cup and it is called a measuring cup because you can measure liquid right inside the cavity of the measuring cup itself. Okay, so I'm going to teach you how you're going to place it onto the lid. Okay, the measuring cup goes right inside the hole of the mixing bowl lid, just like that. And when you want to put it inside the hole, if you notice, the, the measuring cup has a couple of in a way handles at the bottom and you want to slot the handle into the hole at an angle like that all right and then you just push it gently or press it gently onto the mixing bowl lid in the hole and if it is secured you are able to lift the lid with the measuring cup still intact now what i want you to notice is that when you look at your measuring cup in the mixing bowl lid is that there are actually spaces in between the cup as well as the lid. These are holes that will allow vapor or steam to come out when it is cooking or whenever you are you know, in need of drizzling water or eggs into the food you are preparing, you are able to drizzle on the mixing bowl lid so that it trickles down into your mixing bowl. Perfect, wonderful design, isn't it? So that is our measuring cup. Now, you can take off the measuring cup while it's in operation or afterwards. And what you want to do is just, it sh normally it would be in a locking um, position. The locking arm would be locked. Just hold on to the handle. And what I want you to do is carefully, because if it is hot, you know, just be very careful and wary about that. You want to either push the cup forward and then you pivot it up to open it. So this is one way. Or the other way is pull it towards you. And you can pivot it the same way as well. And your measuring cup will come off. Okay? So that is your measuring cup as well as the lid. Hmm. One more thing about the lid. Whenever we are cooking or done cooking, when we are done cooking, how do we open the lid? Alright, I don't want you to be peeking through the lid because the food is hot inside so I don't want steam to go and hit your face so what you want to do when you open up the lid is you want to lift and flip it over and away from your face and then you can flip it onto your work surface just like that okay so this is one method and the reason why you want to lift and flip with the lid still on the mixing bowl area is sometimes there are going to be food like your your chili paste or your smoothie that is on the lid so you want any liquid to drizzle down into the bowl you can scrape it off as well with your spatula and that will not waste any of your food okay so that is all about the lid now Let's go to our next accessory. And I love this one because it's so pretty. And it is called the butterfly. So this is our butterfly whisk. What is it used for? If you want to whip your cream, make your meringue for your pavlova, mashed potatoes, spaghetti bolognese sauce, or even chakwe dao or mi goreng, 
this is what you're gonna use. The butterfly whisk is used to whisk all those items as well as help you to stir soft, uh, soft food. So this is the butterfly. Okay, so there is a way for us to put the butterfly inside the mixing bowl. So I'm just gonna take off the mixing bowl to show you how to do that. Okay, so the concept of the butterfly is, is going to help you stir your ingredients. Meaning that it will be the fifth and sixth blade on your mixing knife. So with that in mind, the butterfly whisk will go in between the gaps of the blade. You got that? Okay, so there are four gaps inside. Which one? Which one do I put it in? So what I want you to do is find the highest blade on your mixing knife. Okay, the highest blade of your mixing knife. And I want you to put it behind it on the blunt side. Okay, so if I were to put it just like that, there you go. It becomes the fifth and sixth stirring arm of your mixing knife. Okay, so that is how you place your butterfly. And if you after you place it in, I just want you to twist it a little bit. All right, just twist it a little bit, and you will find that it's going to secure itself in place. All right, the thing is the butterfly whisk is not going to be locked on the blade. The only locking mechanism that we have on the thermal mix are the locking arms. So the butterfly is just going to be secured when you turn it a little bit after you place it onto the blade. All right, and when you want to take it off, all you got to do is just wiggle it a little bit and then you can gently take your butterfly out and let it fly. Something like that. Alright, so this is the butterfly whisk. Another tip with the butterfly whisk is that whenever you put it inside to cook or stir, anything like that, what I want you to do is just make sure that when it is turned on, you only go to a maximum speed of speed 4. Do not go more than speed 4 because there is a risk that the butterfly the butterfly whisk might get dislodged. So, maximum speed for the butterfly whisk at speed 4. Another tip for the butterfly whisk is that when you start the thermal mix with the whisk inside, just stay with it for a while to make sure that the butterfly whisk doesn't get dislodged while the thermal mix is operating. If it does, then you can just quickly press onto the selector dial to stop the machine and readjust the butterfly whisk itself. All right, so that is our butterfly whisk. So, shall we go to the next accessory, which is our simmering basket. This is your simmering basket, which you're going to use to steam your rice, potatoes, uh, vegetables, and even do any kind of simmering that you would like to. We also use this for sous vide, and we'll talk about that later on. When we want to use our simmering basket, there is also a maximum capacity indicated on the basket itself. And if you are able to close your lid, then you are good to go to use your basket. Do remember though, when you are steaming your rice, rice is going to expand. So just use the recipe indicated by Thermomix and you are good to go. Now, how are we going to place the simmering basket inside the mixing bowl? Because this goes in here. If you notice, at the back of your simmering basket, there is a hole. Alright? And if we flip the lid open, you will notice that there is another hole inside. And they are used for something. Now, I'm going to take out the mixing bowl. And I want you to see inside the mixing bowl, there are three raised indentations. One, two, and three. What we want to do is we want to place the simmering basket hole inside the raised indentation at our handle. Alright, this is how it goes. So, put the mixing bowl onto your base unit. And if you notice, this is our hole at the back. What we want to do, alright, I'm just going to raise it right there so that you can see. What we want to do is, we're going to put the hole at the back right inside the indentation that is near the handle. All right, so I'm just going to pop it inside and push it in. Do remember, it is not going to lock it in place. It's just going to secure the simmering basket inside the bowl. Meaning that if I want to move it about like this, 
it's not going to move meaning that it's perfectly secured right there if you don't secure it then i can actually move it like that okay so make sure that the hole on the simmering basket is inside the raised indentation and just like that you are ready to use the simmering basket just put the lid on and you can activate your thermal mix that is how we use the simmering basket do remember that whenever you have any accessories inside you are not supposed to put any other accessories through the hole like the spatula nope it's not supposed to be inside when and whenever any other accessories are in but i am going to introduce you the spatula because we are going to use it to fish out the simmering basket when you are done cooking with the simmering basket lift and flip the lid open just like that and with the spatula we are going to take out the simmering basket if you notice the spatula has a hook at the back what we want to do is hold on to the handle and the hook is going to go inside the hole in the simmering basket all right so if you notice that's how i'm going to do it i'm going to turn the thermal mix around so that you can see the angle of the spatula hooking onto the simmering basket it is not too high it is not too low just at about what is this 20 or 30 degrees and i want you to hold the handle pull the spatula backwards so that it grabs the simmering basket okay so it's tight and you can lift the basket from the mixing bowl you want to make sure that it is lodged inside because the simmering basket might be heavy with the food inside Okay, so when you do take this out, now you are ready to pour out the food. Alright, flip the lid and then use the thumb that is holding the spatula. And now you can pour out any kind of food that you have been cooking inside the basket. How easy is that? Very, very good. Okay, so that is our simmering basket. Just going to set this aside. And I'm going to talk to you a bit about the spatula. Whenever you use the spatula, you can just place it on the table and it's not going to roll over because of the design and the spatula is what you're going to use to scrape down the food yeah as well as stir and it can also go through the mixing bowl lid the hole the hole lid all right and you can put it inside the hole you put it through the hole and you can use it to help stir all right what you want to notice is it not going to touch the mixing knife? No, because the design is so smart that the disc on the spatula prevents the whole handle to go into the mixing bowl, making it safe for you to use it while the thermal mix is in operation. So that is our spatula. Okay, now we're going to talk about how we're going to prevent splashes of food that is cooking in the thermal mix from splattering on your countertop or even you yourself the first one is the measuring cup which you've already covered all you got to do is just place it into the hole like we've mentioned earlier and majority of the recipes in thermal mix will indicate that you use the measuring cup um, before you start cooking now the second way there are some recipes that are going to tell you instead of using the measuring cup while cooking place the simmering basket onto the mixing bowl lid to prevent splashes and that's how you do it just put the simmering basket onto the lid itself now the third way is in fact using an accessory called the splash guard let me show it to you this is your splash guard i always say that it looks like a hockey mask okay but in fact the design is so brilliant that it has these ears on the side as well as the handle that would go onto the mixing bowl just like that and whenever you activate the thermal mix, the locking arms are going to lock onto the ears and you are not able to take off the splash guard while the thermal mix is cooking. So the splash guard is used whenever you are cooking with recipes from the high temperature mode as well as sugar stages. Okay, so only use the splash guard when it is indicated by the recipe. There is no need to use it at any other time. Now I'm going to tell you about the fourth way to prevent splashes and that is using the Varoma the Varoma set or the Varoma dish There are some recipes like the strawberry jam 
it will tell you to put the Varoma dish yeah, right onto the mixing bowl lid. And why do we do this? Is because based on the ingredients as well as the recipes, um, maybe that particular recipe or the food that is cooking is going to froth up or foam up. So the Varoma is perfect to catch all of that and prevent any further splashes or dripping on the side of your thermal mix. Okay, so some recipes like strawberry jam or soya milk will make sure that you use the Varoma uh, dish instead. So those are the four ways to use um, the different accessories to prevent splashes. Now let's talk about the Varoma set. The Varoma set is what you use for steaming. All right, it comes in three parts, which is the Varoma lid, the Varoma tray, as well as the Varoma dish, okay? Whenever we want to use Varoma, it is used for steaming your food right on top of your thermal mix. So we're just going to place it on top and that's going to steam your food. Whenever we are steaming food, we use the concept of water that turns into vapour and the heat from the vapour is what's going to be cooking your food so that it remains nutritious yet juicy and also flavourful. Okay, so with that in mind, whenever we want to use the Varuma, we want to make sure that the holes on the Varuma set are not covered meaning that whenever you want to place your ingredients inside the Varoma dish or inside the tray there are sufficient holes that are left open that can let the vapor escape and cook your food okay so make sure you arrange your chicken fish or vegetables accordingly so that it doesn't cover a hundred percent leave about 20 percent of the holes unobstructed so that vapor can escape do remember that if you do put your ingredients directly onto the Varoma dish or the tray, whatever juice that is inside the food can actually trickle down into the mixing bowl. So it can affect the taste. If you don't want that, then perhaps you want to cook your food or steam your food in a plate. Okay, so what kind of plate or dish can you use? Please use items that are heat resistant. So plate that are heat resistant or made out of materials that can withstand heat. All you got to do is just place your food inside these plates and you can park it on the Varoma tray or inside the Varoma dish. If the plate is wobbly inside the Varoma dish, a tip is that you can use your butterfly. Use your butterfly. Alright, just like that. And prop your plate on top of the butterfly and that will ensure that the plate doesn't obstruct any of the holes and the steam can still escape because the butterfly is holding it up. Another thing that of course you can use is a tree bed itself. Just like this. You just place it inside and your plate or your ingredients right on top. Okay, so if you don't have that as well, you can use a couple of spoons just place it onto your dish and it will act like a makeshift trivet. Is that a good tip or is that a good tip? Okay, so that's another thing. When you have your ingredients ready, okay, put that inside and you can also put another uh, piece of plate onto the Varoma tray. Or you can also put a baking paper that has been traced and fit on the Varoma tray. The difference with the Varuma tray is that you can in fact cover the holes with the baking paper as an example because on the side of the Varuma tray are holes that will help to um, let vapor escape. Okay, so when you have your ingredients ready, you can prepare your Varuma set and place it on top of the mixing bowl lid. So if you notice, I'm not going to use the measuring cup in this case, I'm just going to Take my Varoma set and place it on to my thermal mix just like that and it's going to steam my food. Okay, so you just turn it on and when it is done steaming, now I'm going to teach you the safe way to open your Varoma uh, lid. Okay, what you want to do is, well in this case I'm going to turn my thermal mix around or you can just uh, swivel your Varoma dish 
to face you so that it opens easily. What you want to do is open the lid. Alright, open the lid so that the steam goes away from your face. Just like this. So open the lid with the steam away. Alright, and you want to place the lid onto the countertop. And now, you want to hold the handles of the Varuma dish and tray together. And you can place them onto the lid. What this will do, it will help to capture any water droplets that are coming out from the Varuma dish and tray. Isn't that amazing? It's so brilliant, the design, and you already have your steamed food. So with that, with the Varuma and all the others, I've covered all the thermal mix parts. The next one, we are going to cover the cooking methods. There are three ways for you to cook with your thermal mix and if we look into the welcome guide, the first one is guided cooking using your cookie dough. The second one is via the feature mode options and number three is manual cooking. So we're going to learn all of these three in the next few minutes and we're going to start with manual cooking. Manual cooking is when you have your own recipes or you are using recipes from the cookbook and you can just flip over into any of the recipes and what you will find is a standard way of recipes being written okay whenever you are looking through a recipe it will indicate the time the temperature as well as the speed that you are meant to use for that particular recipe so let's move on over to the tm6 to see how we can set all of this together all right so on the screen, which is the home screen, you will see three dials. The leftmost being the time, the middle temperature, and the last one being the speed. When you want to set your time, for example, to six minutes, all you got to do is just tap the time um, dial and turn it all the way to the desired time that you need. For example, six minutes. All right. Now, if you want to move to the temperature, you can also tap or you can alternatively press onto the selected dial just like that and the selection will also move on the screen so in this case it's already at the temperature dial and it is indicated that it is selected when the circle is larger than the others so you can set your temperature according to the recipe like it starts off with 37 degrees you can move it up to 40 and maybe 60 degrees when you want to melt your butter you can move it all the way up to 90 or 95 degrees or even 98 whenever you want to cook with cream or coconut milk 100 degrees for general type of cooking whenever you want to simmer your curries or your gravies this is the temperature you want to use and you go a little bit higher to 120 degrees this is the temperature you want to be used for sauteing your food and you can go all the way up to varoma temperature and varoma temperature is the temperature you use when you want to steam your food or thicken any gravy or sauces at the last three to five minutes of the cooking if you want a little bit more information, there's an information icon that you can press and it will indicate that whenever you use the Varuma temperature, you need to make sure you have at least 250 grams of water for every 15 minutes of cooking. If you are unsure, just make sure you use all the Thermomix recipes that have been published uh, because all those recipes have been tested not just for flavour and yumminess but also for your safety so we have set the temperature a neat little tip is that if you want to reset any of the dials back to zero all you got to do is just press on a little bit longer onto the dial and it will reset itself back to zero now we are now at our speed okay when we are at our speed there are a couple of things that you can take note of uh, if you remember, we talk about the blade, there is one blunt side and there is one sharp side. Whenever we are using the sharp side, it means that it's going to uh, cut as well as chop your, your food. But whenever we are using the blunt side, it means that it's going to stir your food without chopping it up. And we use the reverse mode for that. 
the recipe will indicate when you need to use the reverse mode and how do you activate that? In the circle for the speed, there's a smaller little icon which is the icon of a blade. All you got to do is just press that and the reverse mode of the blade is enabled. And if you want to disable that, just press on the reverse blade again and it is done. Okay, so make sure that you uh, know which side of the blade that you are going to use before you cook your food to ensure that whatever that you want to have will become the food that you want. <laughs> okay, now we're going to talk about the blade, the speed. Okay, so we can set the direction which is either reverse or, um, or not reverse. And the other thing is that we can set the speed of the blade. Okay, how do we set the speed is via rotating the selector dial when the speed circle is being selected. Okay, what we want to do now is practice. Let's practice it together. Um, selecting the speed when we are using the Thermomix. If we turn it a little bit, then it will start with the spoon speed, which is the softest stir that you can do with the Thermomix. And then you can gradually go up to the desired speed, for example, speed four, all right? And this will uh, chop your food a little bit. And whenever you wanna go to higher speed than speed four, for example, going all the way up to speed 10, I want you to gradually go up. All right. And you can also gradually go back down to speed four before you stop your machine if you are using the Thermomix at a higher speed by pressing the selector dial to stop the machine and this will automatically unlock the locking arm onto your mixing bowl okay so that is how we use the manual mode for cooking with your thermal mix the next method of cooking is using the automated feature mode so we are now at the home screen and to access the feature modes all you got to do is swipe to the right of the screen and you will be greeted by all these small little circles which are the different modes that come together with your Thermomix. So I'm going to walk you through a few of the most commonly used ones and the first one being the scale function. If I press onto the scale, the entire Thermomix now becomes a weighing scale. I'm going to teach you the three ways to measure with the Thermomix. Number one is measuring directly inside the bowl. So if I were to use my measuring cup as an item to be measured, all right, first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I press the word tear on my screen to zero rise my scale. So you can do that a few times. If you notice that the scale is very sensitive, if I were to touch my mixing bowl or if I were to wiggle my wire, the weighing scale would be toggling as well. So just make sure you press tear every single time you want to measure to get the most accurate reading. So if I were, the first method to weigh is by putting ingredients inside the mixing bowl as such, and you will see that it is now at about 83 grams. So that is pretty good. Now the second method to measure with the mixing bowl is by placing your ingredient on top of the lid like this all right oh let's press there to make sure it's zero rise and i just place my measuring cup on top and it should measure 83 grams just like it did just now all right so you can put your apple or your lemon on top of the mixing bowl just for you to measure it the third way is you can take a bowl or a plate and place it on top of the mixing bowl lid like such and you tear it, zero rise it with the bowl on top of the lid. Next thing, you want to put your ingredients inside the bowl so that you can get the measurement of the ingredient itself and very accurate, 83 grams again. So this is very useful whenever you want to measure ingredients inside its own plate for whenever you are marinating or preparing it for a side dish. So that is item number one which is the scale. Let's look at another mode. 
that is very, very commonly used, which is the dough. The dough mode is something that you're going to use a lot when you are making homemade fresh bread. And all you got to do is just follow the recipe as indicated. And when it asks you to use the dough mode, all you got to do is just press that and set the time required for kneading. For example, two minutes whenever you want to make your quick steam bun. And then you press the dial for the mode itself. In this case, the wheat icon. Yeah, this is the dough mode. And you just turn the selector dial to activate the thermomix and the machine will start kneading your batter, okay? You can also press stop whenever you need by pressing the selected dial just like this. This is how you use the kneading function for your thermal mix. Let's move on to another item, to another mode that is commonly used, which is the turbo mode. So with the turbo mode, I want you to notice something very, very unique. Whenever I press this, the locking arm automatically locks the mixing bowl in place as a safety mechanism. If we look at the turbo uh, screen itself, I want you to try and uh, set the time which can only go to a maximum of 2 seconds. And the way we activate it is again by pressing the turbo dial and pressing the selector dial. Okay? But if you notice, once the mode is done, it did not unlock my locking arms. What do I have to do to unlock it? There are two ways. One, I can go back to the small little circle screen and press on my turbo mode. Or an easier shortcut is just to press the home button that is on top of the screen and this will unlock the mixing bowl. So we use the turbo mode whenever we want to break down um, items, uh, so chunky items into smaller pieces before you um, blend it into smaller pieces. So when I talk about uh, ingredients that can go inside the mixing bowl, I want you to take down this note is that whenever you want to place ingredients to be chopped or blended, okay, if the ingredients can fit through the mixing bowl lid hole without you forcing the ingredient to go into the bowl, then it is a good size for it to be chopped. If not, please make sure that any of your food ingredients are in the correct size um, by cutting it in half or quarters before you put it inside your thermomix. Alright, that's very very easy to remember because your indicator is the hole on the mixing bowl lid itself. Alright, let's go to the other modes. We have the pre-clean mode which is a favourite for a lot of people because it's going to help you pre-clean at least about 85% of the food residue that you have inside the bowl. Alright, how do we use the pre-clean mode? For any of the modes that you see on the screen just now, you can always read up a little bit more information by pressing the info icon at the top corner of the screen. And it will tell you about the mode itself and also a little bit about how to use it. So with the pre-clean mode, there are four different functions of cleaning. All right, four different types of cleaning in fact. One is for the dough. Another is a universal cleaning mode for whenever you cook your curries or your sambal. Uh, another is for fat or caramel whenever you are done with sugar stages recipes like caramels or honeycomb. And lastly is for browning. Okay, um, so just again read through the information icon to know a little bit more about the modes. And how do we use this pre-clean mode? It is very, very easy. All you got to do is just you know, with, with your dirty bowl, you can put in water just to cover the top side of the, at a minimum. The minimum is for you to put in water to cover the, the blades and a maximum is one litre, which is indicated by the capacity marking on your mixing bowl. When you are done, you can place the, water, place the bowl with the water onto the thermomix and optionally, you can also put a drop of dishwashing liquid into the bowl and you want to place it, place the lid on and 
when you want to activate it, just select the mode that you want to be using for your pre-clean, either dough, universal, fat, caramel or browning, just like that. And with the pre-clean, the timing is going to be automatically set for you so you don't have to remember any cleaning time. So I will just stop that and those are the four most common um, automated mode that is being used. There are a lot of others and more is definitely coming to you in the automated area. There are blending, there's the blend mode which you can use for your smoothie. Okay, for your smoothies or for your paste, just set the indicated time and your desired speed for you to make your drinks, etc. That's the blend mode. We also have the egg boiler mode. All you got to do is, you know, read up a little bit about what it is about and you can select the kind of egg doneness that you want, either soft, medium or even hard boil. All you got to do is select the... Um, the kind of eggs you want via the selected dial. Another thing is that we have the kettle. Now your thermal mix becomes its own kettle, though it is more special. Normal kettle will only go to 100 degrees Celsius, but with the thermal mix, we can even set it to different other temperatures. For example, you want to use 75 degrees for your tea so that the bitterness doesn't break into the tea and it will taste perfect. That's the kettle mode. I love the warm-up mode. Whenever I have leftovers in my fridge, I can just pop the gravy into my Thermomix and set the temperature as well as the speed and it will help to warm up my food very, very simply, just like that. Just a note to remember, whenever you use the warm-up mode, you need to make sure that the food actually has liquid in it, um, not to be used with food that is um, dry like rice because it will not work okay so that's the warm-up mode we also have thickened mode you can do uh, sauce or custards either egg based or starch based using this thickened mode just follow the recipe as well as the temperature that you need to it will automatically set the time and thicken your sauces we also have the rice cooker mode, which is one of our favorite. All you gotta do is put in your rice and your liquid, and you just have to activate the rice cooker mode and it will automatically set the time. And you can just walk away and let your biryani or ginger fried rice or clay pot chicken rice cook while you are resting. The next one is we have fermentation. Fermentation is when you wanna make your yogurt. So with fermentation, it can cook up to 8 hours. Yes, 8 hours. Set your yogurt overnight and in the morning, you can already um, you know, get your yogurt prepared for your family. So that's fermentation mode. We also have slow cooker. So the Thermomix become a slow cooking machine up to 8 hours where all the flavors and nutrients of the food is still going to be intact in the liquid you are cooking it in and um, it is perfect for whenever you want to be cooking your stews, your beef broth. So use the slow cooker mode because your Thermomix is already one. You can also use it for the sous vide function which is going to make tender and juicy chicken breast, salmon and uh, beef steak whatsoever because with the sous vide mode, you can cook up to 12 hours with precise 1 degree temperature um, setting and you don't have to worry about um, your food being overdone and overcooked with the sous vide. That is amazing. And also we have other modes that are coming. You just have to make sure that you always update your thermal mix with the most recent version whenever a software update is being asked for. Now we are gonna go to our last mode, which is the best one, which is the guided cooking. So all I gotta do is I can just press home and I can scroll over to my cookie do or guided cooking screen all right so when we talk about cookie dough there are a, a few ways we can start guided cooking 
Number one is you can search directly on the Thermomix but I would suggest and recommend that you actually browse for recipes onto, uh, in your mobile or on your PC and make sure that your Thermomix is connected to the Wi-Fi because whatever that you save on your uh, PC or mobile via your Cookie Do account will be synced directly onto your TM6 and ready to be used. Let's browse for some recipes inside our Cookie Do uh, website. All I gotta do is just take my mobile and open cookiedo.international. Let's see what we can cook for this week. Okay, let me see. Let's say I want to make some chicken stock. I just press, I just search for chicken stock in the search function. And hmm, this recipe looks pretty good. Let's read up a little bit about it, the ingredients, the preparation steps. And if I scroll all the way down, I can see nutrition as well as hints and tips. This looks like a very good recipe. Why don't we go ahead and add it to a bookmark? Yeah, all right, that's done. What else do I want to make? Hmm, perhaps maybe for the week, I want to make chicken rice. So let's look for chicken rice, type in chicken. Type in rice and click on search. Hmm, even the first one looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and click it for, for me to make it today. So the recipe has been added into my meal plan. What else can I make? Ah, I am craving for some sugar. So you can search for caramel and all caramel recipes would come up. But what I want you to look at is that on top of searching for recipes, if I click the arrow button on my search function, I can click on collections instead of recipes and I will be brought over to a list of mini recipe books inside Cookie Do. This looks pretty good. Cooking with sugar stages. Oh, look at all the recipes inside. I have in fact saved it inside my own Cookie Do collection. I can easily remove it if I don't want it or I can just save it and it will be inside my, my recipes that I have collected. Hmm, what else can I make? I wonder if I can... I heard about the high temperature function. So what is high temp? I can search for high temp and again click on collections and I have a variety of high temperature mode um, recipes that I can use. Let's click on this one, high temperature Asian cooking and I can make shallot oil. So let's make shallot oil but instead of making it today, I'm going to add it to my week for something I'm going to be making tomorrow or the day after and I can just simply save it. Oh. So in Cookie Do, what you can also go do is go to the menu section and you can view your account and your profile and other things. If I want to see all the recipes I have saved, I can click my recipes and all the collections as well as bookmark recipes over there. Alright, another thing that I can also do is go back to the menu and click on my week and I can see everything that I have planned for. Um, to cook during the whole week. I can toggle between calendar as well as list view and I can even click on an item on a recipe and add it to my shopping list. And in Cookie Do, you can create a shopping list just like that. Click, click open the list which is at the bottom of the browser. And you can find the shopping list either by category or by recipes. You can even export it out by sharing it uh, to a mail or email or even to WhatsApp and things like that. So that is how amazing Cookie Do is if you browse it on the mobile itself and whatever that you do on your Cookie Do. If you have your Wi-Fi and your Thermomix is connected to it, everything that is done on your Cookie Do account on your phone will be sync on your TM6. So another thing that we can do with the guided cooking on TM6 is search for the recipes on the Thermomix screen itself. There is a search bar and all you got to do is type in the recipe that you want. So I've heard a lot about teh tarik. 
So we're going to look for Teh Tarik. In fact, it comes out as a suggested item. There you go. I have Teh Tarik recipes over here and I can click uh, onto a recipe directly and even add it to something I want to cook today or as a bookmark item. Okay. recipes are already synced from whatever I've browsed just now. All I gotta do is go back to my, my home screen or even my cookie do screen to go and search and there is our menu button at the top right hand corner. There's three little bars at the top. All I gotta do is press my three little bars and I can click my recipes. And in my recipes, I can access everything that I have bookmarked earlier all the different recipes I've browsed and for, you know, easy reference like little pancakes or cheesecakes as such and I can also go to my safe collections like the sugar stages I did earlier as well as the high temperature mode and there are various collections in various languages as well that you can explore including the two free collections that you will always carry around in your TM6 which is the which are the our favorites as well as the basic cookbook uh, it will depend on um, the, the, the selected uh, settings you have done earlier okay and I want also to show you that you can explore my week for all the recipes you sync inside your calendar so in our case, what did we plan to cook today? This is the chicken rice and teh tarik. So how do we use cookie do? All you got to do is press the recipe, the selected recipe that you want to be making for that day or that particular moment. In this case, my chicken rice. And I can scroll down on my TM6 itself and you can read all the ingredients and preparation steps. And I would suggest that you read all the way until the end for the hints and tips so that you know extra ways to make your dishes amazing. But the power of guided cooking is in fact with the small little start cooking button that we have on the recipe. All you gotta do to cook with cookie do is press start cooking. So when we do that, the screen is going to show you the step-by-step -step, um, preparation with the ingredients alongside for you to cook your dish. In the case of making the Hainan chicken rice, it tells me to place a large bowl on the mixing bowl lid. Okay, so a large bowl, that's a separate bowl. So I have a bowl over here and this is where I'm putting my bowl. And all I got to do is press next at the top of my screen and it tells me to weigh into the bowl that I've placed about 500 grams of chicken legs. So I can go ahead and put in my chicken legs into the bowl because it has already called up the weighing scale function of the thermomix. When I'm done with this, I can just press next and continue to follow the instructions. In this case, put in my soy sauce and I'm done. It tells me to put ground white pepper and stir it around and let it marinate for 30 minutes. And all I gotta do is just follow the instructions all the way until my recipe is done. In this case, it tells me to add water, sea salt, and then it also tells me to insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid. You know, we've learned this already earlier. I just follow the instructions and now it's going to be doing something in the thermomix because the guided cooking has now called upon the time, temperature and speed um, selections. But the good thing about guided cooking is already preset some of the settings. Like in this case, it's at six, six seconds on the timer, no temperature and it, all I gotta do as a user is follow the instruction at the bottom of the screen which says turn speed selected to speed 4. That's all I got to do. I just have to turn the speed selector, which is this, this dial over here, and go all the way to speed 4, which is already color-coded, indicated very lightly on the leftmost circle, which is the speed selection. All I got to do is turn to speed 4, 
and the Thermomix will do its job, which is, in this case, mixing the water with uh, all the other ingredients for 6 seconds. When it is done, you will hear that it calls you out, it opens up the locking arm and, you, and in guided cooking, you just press next to follow what is the next step. So this is how you use guided cooking basically, all the way to the end until your dish is finished. Okay, so that is so so simple and at any point of time, if you need to go out from your guided cooking, you can just press the home button. Maybe you want to uh, do another recipe, you want to use the scale function for a second. Okay, you can just go out from the recipe, you want to be, you know, chopping a little bit more of your um, onion, etc. You can use the manual mode, but when you want to continue the recipe that you were doing just now, you can just press the small little icon, which is the bookmark, and it will bring you back to the last step that you were doing in your guided cooking, and you can continue on. So if we were to go through all the steps, there are quite a lot over here. It will bring you to uh, make your chicken rice to perfection. At any point of time you want to cancel a recipe, there are small little dots for option that you can select. Either you can preview, you can read again the recipe detail, you can go to the scale mode or even cancel an active recipe. So let's say in this case I want to cancel it. All I got to do is just press cancel. And that is the way that you use your cookie dough. Very simple and very, very easy. Um, another two points that I want to talk about with cookie dough is that the only method, um, cookie dough is the only way um, that you can access high temperature as well as sugar staging recipes, such as making your sauteed beef, uh, your kam hyong prawns, and even your salted caramel or honeycomb, those are recipes that are available using your guided cooking method, which is recipes that is safe via cookie dough. So such examples are your caramel or your lollipop, which can only be accessed via guided cooking. So all in all, those are the three ways that you can cook with your Thermomix. The first is manual cooking, Second is the automated feature mode and the third one is guided cooking. Let's go through the safety instructions once again and you can access this via the help uh, section in the menu itself. There are 10 safety messages so we'll go through one by one. Number one is about using the original accessories and parts by Borwag itself. So don't use any uh, copycats or um, other accessories that are not provided or sold by Borac to ensure that it is for your safety because all the parts and accessories have been tested as well as has been approved for usage with your Thermomix. And item number two is about avoiding injury when cooking hot food. Make sure that you always place your measuring cup or any other uh, accessories that have been instructed with the recipe itself and we've already learned this and number three is for whenever you are cooking and there are boiling over that is happening all you got to do is just press the selector dial to stop the thermomix whenever it is cooking and you are worried about boiling over uh, of food etc number four is to avoid any fat or oil from splashing around especially when you're using the high temperature mode use the splash guard and we've already learned how to do this just now number five when you want to place your thermomix make sure that it is not near any flammable items uh, especially the stove which can cause your appliances not just the thermomix to catch on fire so i think that is pretty common sense be safe whenever you want to use any appliances and number six to avoid any hot content splashing out of the thermomix make sure that you adhere to the capacity markings that are either for the mixing bowl or for your simmering basket okay Number seven is again talking about making sure hot contents doesn't boil over from your mixing bowl. 
again by ensuring you follow the capacity marking of ingredients inside the mixing bowl itself for mixing bowl it will be 2.2 liters maximum capacity Number eight, we talk about the mixing knife and ensuring that the sealing ring, the green sealing ring is always attached and secured at the topmost of the mixing knife part so that there are no leaks that are coming out from the food that is cooking inside the mixing bowl. And number nine, you only touch the indicated handle of your accessories. Every single accessory will have a handle like the mixing bowl, even the measuring cup and the butterfly. All of them have the handle and especially the varoma itself when it, because you are dealing with hot steaming food. And the last and the most important safety message is item number 10 which is refer to your manual to read all and every single thing that you want to learn about the safe usage of your Thermomix. And with that, we've covered all the safety instructions that will make sure you are safe when you are cooking with your Thermomix. Thermomix gets better and better by itself. Keep yourself updated with Thermomix usage and functions through the version updates. The last part while we are on our screen is going to the settings. We know how to cook with our thermal mix already and as well as our pot. Now we can also dive into the settings of our thermal mix just by pressing the menu bar. And what do I mean by setting? Alright, so if we go to the menu and there is a setting mode, this is where you can change your Wi-Fi connection, turn on um, your Bluetooth, Check your cookie do account validity and you can even uh, change the volume of your Thermomix sound. You can select the melody that you want and you can even change the brightness of your display accordingly via the setting um, menu over here. You can also set your Thermomix to a transportation mode whereby whenever you want to travel, make sure that you have your mixing bowl in the base unit so with your uh, lid on and you want to click the word activate so that it locks the mixing bowl in place to secure your Thermomix for traveling and you can turn it off and your Thermomix is ready to travel with you anywhere you want to go. Okay, so you can set the transportation mode. Other things that you can also do is um, set a different system of measurement between metric or imperial. And there is one other thing which is the factory reset, okay? Which can be used to troubleshoot your thermal mix if it were to suddenly hang or anything as such. Um, what you can do is just press the factory reset and then turn your thermal mix back on. If the problem still persists, then the next thing you would want to do is contact customer service and have them advise what is the next step for you and your thermal mix. I hope that is clear for you. Alright, so that is everything that we have got to explain with regards to the settings of your thermal mix as well as the cooking mode. If we Let's go and check out our welcome guide because this is what's going to help us go through the unboxing. We've already covered the three ways to cook with your Thermomix and ah, let's not forget your warranty information is also in your welcome guide which you can refer to for the consumables as well as the internal parts of your Thermomix. So all your Thermomix parts are dishwasher safe including your mixing bowl except for the base unit on a daily basis, after every single time you use it, make sure that you practice washing it. And at the end of the day, make sure you disassemble your mixing bowl and wash every single part. And how do you wash it? Of course, you will be at the sink and you can use a sponge just to wipe it around. Or even if you want to use a brush to brush it a little bit if there are any stains inside. And you can just rinse it through water and everything as such and you can leave it to dry or you can also dry it with a cloth. Whenever you are done, whenever it is dry, you can reassemble it back just like this. But before you place it back onto the base unit, 
make sure the five pins at the bottom are dry. This is very, very crucial. Always, always remember that. So, we can just place your clean mixing bowl right back onto the base unit. There is no need to keep your mixing bowl in a separate cabinet or storage. It fits right there on your countertop for you to use every single day. You can also check out our weekly cleaning tips, monthly cleaning tips that you can access from the YouTube itself or any of our other resources for additional cleaning tips to keep your bowl sparkling and new. All right, so another thing, do not forget to plan for your hosting so that you can grab the hosting gift for that particular period that you've bought, your Thermomix. And it is going to be an exciting moment to share the joy of cooking with Thermomix with your friends as well as with your family members. So I hope you have enjoyed the unboxing that we have done for you today. And I can't wait to see all the amazing dishes that you're gonna be cooking for you and your family and maybe your family's gonna be cooking for you as well. So I hope that you have a great Thermomix journey ahead of you. Keep on cooking and keep on sharing. And I hope that we'll meet again at any other cooking classes that we'll be having in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of Thermomix to access recipes as well as tips and also our Facebook and Instagram account. And don't forget to tag us as well. So thank you very much for joining the unboxing session that we have for today. And happy Thermomixing!